Hey guys, so today um, I had a question from one of y'all about doing fade paints. And so on this lovely rainy day, sorry for the extra noise. But on this lovely rainy day, uh, we are in the paint booth. And I'm going to get just show you really quickly how to do a fade paint. I actually just use spray paint. Um, you can use an airbrush, but it will take a little bit longer and... Um, I like to actually just start with the spray paints and then I'll touch up with the airbrush because you can get a smoother transition with the airbrush, um, but like when you really need to lay down a lot of pigment, it's nice to just use spray paint. You can, if, you're, if you want to go cheap, like you can get 90% of the effect with this Rust-Oleum 2X. Um, I actually really like it for the most part. Uh, you can get a you can get better adhesion and a smoother transition if you have the money. Um, and I forget the I forget the name of it now. I'll have to look it up. But it's uh, at Michaels. You can get um, a or I think even at Joanne you can get a spray paint that is meant for fabrics. And uh, those do a little bit better in terms of adhesion and, and how smooth they are. But, I, like, there are 7 to $10 per can versus, like, 3 So, uh, yeah, it depends on your budget, I guess. So, anyway, um, one of the things to keep in mind when you're doing a transition, even if you're... You're like, I just want, I want to transition from red to black. You're not going to just buy black paint. You are going to buy black paint for the tips. You're going to buy super dark red for uh, the next part. You're going to buy like dark-ish red. And then you're going to buy bright red to match the color of, of the feather. Um, or, you know, the main part of the feather. And the reason you do this, the reason you have this giant transition, uh, number of, like, transitionary colors, is so that you get a nice, smooth transition between the two colors. And this is the case even with, you know, that nice spray paint I said has a nice, smooth transition. Because what you're doing is, like, visually, if you just did black, it just looks dirty and dusty as you get, as you, like, quote unquote, thin out the black, right? Versus if you have those transitionary colors, it look, it blends much, much nicer. Um, so I'm gonna kind of demonstrate this with this white feather. And we're gonna go, we're actually, we're not gonna go quite to black, we could. But I'm not going to. Um, and what we're gonna do, So, what I'm going to do, ooh, it's new, fancy. So a good idea to, is to like practice before you start spraying. Um, I have a lot of practice with this, but like I go in short sweeping bursts, so I kind of go like that. Um, and I know, like, you need to be moving when you press down on the thing. You don't want to, like, and then start to move because then you get this big old splotch. And you don't want that. Um, so when you're doing this, you're going to go over in bursts. And you don't want to completely saturate the feather at any point in time because what that's going to do is create, like, these shiny spots. Um... And it, like, it, it, it just looks, it looks less organic to have like these paint splotches, right? Um, so let's see, we did a dark layer and I usually do two coats. So I'm not looking for perfection right now. I'm just trying to get my, my fade and my colors down. Let's see. Yeah, so I started with an espresso, which is darn near black. I moved on to Kona Brown, which is a very, it's a dark purpley brown. I usually have like a brown brown, but I couldn't find it. So let me do what we got.
Okay, so this feather here, now that I've done that, I've got mostly, I got it mostly where I want it. The nice thing, though, is I always kind of start a little light so that I have to go over it again anyway. So, like, if you want to punch up one of the colors or the fade or something, you can do that, and you have a better idea of kind of where you're going with it. Keep in mind, too, that, like, after this second coat, for example, if I decided that I didn't like how the transition was, like it wasn't smooth enough, you're not going to try and smooth it out with the dark colors. You're going to smooth it out with the light colors because they're not going to completely obscure like the darker colors at the bottom. They're going to just kind of blend them out. So this feather is transitioning from like a, a, a dark, dark brown to a white. And you can see we have like this really nice even fade um and that took what one two three four five colors and i didn't even have like a pure white in there usually i would but i ran out so we're close enough right but yeah i would usually like if i wanted that white like a bright white at the top i would like blast it just at the very top real quick with like the pure white for example so that would be six colors that we have just to get this nice even brown fade. Um, the nice thing with that though is you can get some really cool um, well, I want to start leaking here in a minute. Um, you can get some really really beautiful color transitions so like if you're doing like a phoenix or something you know start with like a bright or light yellow and you can get this full beautiful transition between like light yellow, darker yellow, a couple of oranges, a couple of reds, so like a deep like crimson red at the tips. And you can have that full transition of color in there and it looks really beautiful when you're when when you have all of these different colors in this fade. And you're kind of basically just going in stripes. But when if you know as long as you blend it out between the stripes you get this. So um but this is for like a dark color. If you're doing just a light color, like I have a customer, off. I have a customer, for example, who wants, um, yeah, yeah, you can still see, who just wants like an off white at the tips. Now, what I do for that, always, always have more than one color. Um, even though, like, this off-white paint, we throw it on there, that's, I mean, probably what they were thinking when they did it, right? But it's really monochromatic. It's not, ter I don't even know if you can see it. It's, um, it's really quite boring. Um, it technically gets the job done, but... To make your feathers look really dynamic and beautiful, I recommend always doing at least two colors, even if you're only hitting it with just a hint of that, like, darker color at the edge. Because it's just going to give it more depth. I'm going to give it a little bit more than I think I want on this, and then go back over with my ivory to blend it out a little. So that gives it a little more depth than just that one color. Always try, like, even though this is a really light feather um, and they just want, like, a really, really subtle, like, off-white at the tips, I'm going to give them just a little punch of, of darker, um, like, nude at the tips. It still looks, still looks, you know, like off-white, but punching it up just that little bit really helps. So, um, yeah, that's fade painting. One thing to, to think about, um, when you are doing these different colors, if you have some crazy color combo, um, that, if you have some crazy color combo um, that, like contrasting colors, so you have black and white and um, blue 
and like basically like you're just going to create really muddy colors if you you, you are going to mix those colors you can start out with white and like mask off the parts that need to be contrasting colors you know like so if you're going to do like a green and a red set it's going to be really tough to like basically put enough paint down to completely mask the co color underneath in this case i would think red would probably mask you know you could put green on top and it would do better than red on green but you're more likely to create a really muddy color and so you may want to start off with something like a white um that you can paint over and then um get those colors uh, both those colors nice and crisp uh if and the same if, if you're transitioning between those two colors. It can get really difficult when you're doing contrasting colors, but it is doable. Um, the thing I would note is if you are painting onto just white, what ends up happening is this paint will eventually, like these feathers are rubbing against each other as these open and close, you may get, the, the, the paint will eventually start to fade depending on how much you use them. My hot girl set, which I have, I have used to death, these poor things are now four years old. Um, I can't believe they're still running. Uh, and I use them for a ton of events. Uh, I've shipped them a bunch of times. Um, I've had to touch up the stripes twice now. Uh, because they get so much use. Um, and, you know, they're opening and closing all day for three days at a time. And, you know, they get worse of the town, poor things. So, if you do that, like, your base color is going to show through. So if you do white and you're supposed to be, you know, your wings are supposed to look green and red and you have white underneath, you're probably going to have to touch it up sooner than if, you know, you have a brown set of wings that is like a brown to black fade. What's going to show underneath is that brown and so it's not going to be as noticeable as quickly as if you... There we go. Um... It's not going to be as noticeable as quickly as if you um, do, like, bold colors on, like, a white. Because those are going to look more faded uh, more quickly as that rubs off and kind of exposes, thins out and exposes the white underneath a little bit. Um, the other thing is if you want to do um, things like stripes. So those are a little bit different. And we're gonna, I'm going to make another video when it's not raining and we're running out of time so i'm gonna actually get out of here because the rain is starting to pile up enough to go through the drainages in here merry christmas get out.